What's up everyone, HMK here, your boy once again with another Nintendo leak that deals with the Legend of Zelda. You guys already know when it comes to the channel and the hype that is surrounding the 35th anniversary and the promised news of Breath of the Wild 2 that's going to be going down this year. Now, there's a leak that came out from two very respectable leakers by the names of Kelios and Samus Hunter, literally on the eve, about two months before E3, that we should be expecting some really good stuff, but what was intended may have been shaken up due to the pandemic, which makes a lot of sense. But when it comes to what is going down with Nintendo's side and possible trademarks, I think E3 could be a very explosive time to be a Nintendo fan. The first thing I want to talk about when it comes to the Zelda 35th anniversary and the blowout when it comes to, you know, the games is that there could be another version of Ocarina of Time coming in time. Now, I know you guys, some of you guys were tired of seeing Ocarina of Time over and over and over again, but guess what? I'm not because I love Ocarina of Time. Up until Breath of the Wild is my favorite Zelda game. My favorite game. But what's cool about this trademark that got listed is that it's not a trademark to be listed for the original N64 version that could be ported or the 3DS version because it'll be Ocarina of Time 3D. It seems that it's a new trademark of something called Ocarina of Time on behalf of Nintendo that's coming soon. Or I, I shouldn't say coming soon because it just got trademarked, but I'm just, I'm so tantalized at the notion of something more from Ocarina of Time coming to Nintendo Switch or phones or whatever, not phones, please. But if we do get an Ocarina of Time remake, like along the lines of Final Fantasy VII Remake or Resident Evil 2 Remake, you know, from the ground up new and stuff, then I'm definitely down to see if Nintendo's gonna take me to town once again with Ocarina of Time and then reclaim its throne as my favorite game. But uh, something may come up this Something may not. Usually, Nintendo and other companies like to, you know, keep their bases covered by trademarking certain trademarks. But it's not like this is a renewal. This is something new. So, going on with Breath of the Wild 2, which we have been promised to get more new news this year, because we didn't get any last year, and I knew we're promised after the whole Skyward Sword reveal that we're gonna get some new. You know, we got Age of Calamity DLC coming. We got Skyward Sword HD coming. But Breath of the Wild 2, that's, that's the juice. That is what I want to see. And literally two years after the reveal of that huge trailer, it seems that they are setting up Nintendo-wise for something big Breath of the Wild 2 related going into E3. Now, there's been talk by Samus Hunter saying that there might be some Zelda news like a little before E3, but it could like touch upon Breath of the Wild 2, but not in a way that we could expect. And that something going into E3, according to, you know, Kelios and Simon Center as they're alluding or whatnot, is that Breath of the Wild 2 could have a huge impact at the actual E3 show. Which makes a lot of sense, considering that, you know, once again, E3 2019, that's when we got that big reveal trailer. And then two years afterwards, just like how we got 2014 going into 2016 with the original Breath of the Wild, it could be that time is a loop. And that it's a flat surface and it's going to repeat itself Nintendo-wise because man, oh man, you gotta bring the A game when it comes to Breath of the Wild 2. Now, some really weird things when it comes to The Legend of Zelda, when it comes to, you know, the lurking rumors and leaks from, you know, not only Kelios and um, Samus Hunter, is that apparently there's another remake in line to release on Nintendo Switch that isn't Ocarina of Time, that isn't Majora's Mask, that isn't Twilight Princess, that isn't The Wind Waker, that isn't Skyward Sword. It's Spirit Tracks? You know, I'm, I'm not one to knock on any other Zelda game and stuff, you know, I think all Zelda games are really good and Spirit Tracks is not even nowhere near my least favorite or anything like that, but I feel it's weird that we're gonna get a Spirit Tracks remake or remaster or re-release on the Switch before Phantom Hourglass? I mean, like, you would think that we get Phantom Hourglass first, and then we get Spirit Tracks, considering that those two games, along with the Wind Waker, make up the Great Sea Trilogy and whatnot. 
And uh, the fact that they might be focusing on Spirit Tracks before I farm Hourglass, that seems kind of hanky-panky and seems kind of weird to me. But who knows? Nintendo is weird. They always do all these things that we may not expect. And uh, I'm sure Spirit Tracks, a lot of people like Spirit Tracks. Farm Hourglass is good too, you know? It, it, it's good. But Spirit Tracks, I don't know. Considering that E3 is probably not going to only be the Legend of Zelda base, like they're going to have a lot of other things, probably No More Heroes 3 is going to be there. Uh, Super Smash Brothers, they're going to reveal a new character or whatnot. But according to Samus Hunter, they're going to have huge events encompassing multiple things outside of the Zelda 35th anniversary. And that includes a Smash tournament, kind of like how they did before in previous E3s, which makes a lot of sense. And uh, there's whispers that apparently uh, the next new fighter that's going to be Fighters Pack 11 could be a Zelda newcomer you know to celebrate the 35th anniversary and all the stuff that's going on with breath of the wild 2 the 35th anniversary yada 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 and we have no idea who's gonna be but then kelios tweets something that seems to be like a fairy boy an elf boy fairy anything like that so it might be a character that is specifically ocarina of time centric or something from around the lines of you know the hero of time i would not hate if fierce deity came as a you know uh <laughs> Uh, a, 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 a nice newcomer to Super Smash Bros. We have Young Link. No, Young Link is Young Link, and Fierce DT Link is Fierce DT Link. And they can always pull up that, you know, Majora's Mask re release uh, art with the Fierce DT just like walking towards you with the sword on his back, and that's gonna be the fighter art. You heard it here first. But then, I'm not. Then, I'm so scared that it might be Tingle. I don't want Tingle. What not? Other than Smash, apparently there is going to be a Splatoon 3 open, a tournament of invites of people that are going to be playing Splatoon 3 live uh, from Nintendo's behalf on the Nintendo Treehouse and Nintendo Direct, all that good jazz. And even though the game is being slated for 2022, we did see a playable aspect of it during that reveal trailer and whatnot. So it seems that some sort of playable build does exist. And that it wouldn't be too out of the question to see invited players that are known to play Splatoon 1 and 2 to be playing 3 live in order to show us what the game can do uh, in difference to what the original and Splatoon 2 is able to be you know, capable of. That would be a cool way to have a really cool event to have a lot of people watching because Nintendo does that stuff with ARMS, Splatoon, Smash. It's nothing new they've done for E3 so Smash and Splatoon 3 at E3, I, I tend to believe it. To round off the Zelda 35th anniversary celebration that could be going on into E3 and whatnot is that of course Skyward Sword HD is coming out in July which is a month after E3 but then that doesn't stop Nintendo from blowing out the huge Zelda 35th anniversary plans in which uh, Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD could be possibly releasing later down the uh, year or a lot of people are believing that they might just port uh, Majora's Mask 3D and Ocarina of Time 3D which would relay to the Ocarina of Time trademark, but in a new way that it wouldn't be called Ocarina of Time 3D, in which a lot of people believe that they could take aspects of both the original N64 version and the 3DS version and release it on the Switch as possibly Ocarina of Time Definitive Edition, which is something that Nintendo has done before, but honestly, I would rather take a full-on scope from the ground up remake, and that'll be quite spicy. Now, Breath of the Wild 2, of course, is probably going to be the star of the show this year at Nintendo's E3. But I want to see what's going to go down when it comes to when they decide to release it, what kind of information they're going to release, gameplay, a name, some story aspects. Because, I mean, this is a sequel to a game that has been very famous for the past four years. And I don't think that we do need a primer when it comes to what Breath of the Wild is capable of. They really need to show off what's new. And when it comes to what's new, I want to see how they structure that. Because Breath of the Wild 2 can be something that is the epitome of Nintendo's greatness on Nintendo Switch. And possibly lead into a reveal of Nintendo Switch Pro or whatnot. And I feel that it's going to be a very strong possibility that some leaks say that Breath of the Wild 2 is still in line for 2021. But I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it, but I still want to believe it because I want this game now. 
So let me know what you think about this leak and if you think it's real or fake in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe to HMK for more Nintendo content, news, leaks, and all that good jazz, especially with The Legend of Zelda. Do you want to know why Ganondorf has pointy ears? Do you want to know how he got those ears? Check out my latest video before this on Ganondorf's pointed ears in the description box and on the tags and on the end screen. So guys, until the next video, this has been HMK, and I'll check you guys later.